welcome students on today's lecture on the design today we will discuss about the design of uh, water tank so let us see the uh, syllabus once again so in the previous whatever we have learned for this subject that is in module 1 footings design of rectangular slab type combined footing is to be done retaining wall design of cantilever retaining wall and contrafort retaining wall the design is done now next we will move forward with the design of water tanks today so design what all you have design of water tanks so design of circular water tanks resting on ground rigid and flexible base and design of rectangular water tanks resting on ground which should be as per is 3370 part 4 so today we shall discuss about the water tanks a bit water tanks are nothing but the storage structure storage of water is done in the storage tank and whatever design is there those are water tank resting on the ground so we have two types of uh, design of water tanks one is design of circular water tanks and the other is design of rectangular water tanks now this is based on the geometry and depending upon the base so the circular water tank there are two types one is with a rigid base and one with a flexible base and the design of rectangular tank resting on ground which should be as per IS 3370 part 4 so this IS 3370 part 4 is for the design for the water tanks both rigid and flexible and other geometrical properties like circular rectangular and other shapes so this code book has been put into the model I have put all the four parts that is IS3370 part 1, IS3370 part 2, IS3370 part 3 and IS3370 part 4. Please it's a request to go through all the parts. So you have to download the uh, code book from the link given in the Moodle. So just check with it and see the design component. So today we shall start with the water tanks, design of water tanks. Initially I will start with the design of circular water tanks resting on ground. So let us start with the design of water tank. So welcome students. So we will start with the design of water tank. So as per the syllabus today we shall start the design of water tank that is circular water tank with the flexible base. So I have taken up a numerical, we shall solve one numerical of the design. So let us see the data. Design a circular tank with a flexible base for capacity of 5 lakh liters. The depth of the water is to be 4 meter, free board equal to 200 mm, use M20 grade concrete and grade 1 mild steel. The permissible direct tensile stress in concrete is 1.2 Newton per mm square. Permissible stress in direct tension is 100 Newton per mm square. Sketch the details of reinforcement in the tank walls. So this is the given data. So let us see what all is the data. So first of all, this is a circular tank. Then it is of flexible piece and it should hold a capacity of 5 lakh liters. The depth of the water should be 4 meters. That means they have given already the depth. The free board is 200 mm. Grade of concrete M20 and grade of steel is mild. The permissible direct tensile stress in concrete is given 1.2 Newton per mm square. Permissible stress in direct tension is 100 Newton per mm square. Sketch the details of reinforcement in the water tank. So let us just go through what is given in the code book. So this is a question which we are going to solve. So let us see in the code book. So IS3370 part 1. So this is a st Indian standard code book for practice for concrete structures for the storage of liquid. So this is part 1. These are the general requirements. So in the general requirements, if you see what all has been given. So here it is clearly mentioned. The three other parts of the code are following. Part 2, reinforced concrete structures. Part 3, pre-stressed concrete structures and part 4, 
design tables. Now in a syllabus it was mentioned that the design of water tanks is to be done as per the IS3370 part 4. So part 4 is nothing but gives the design table. So we have to make the use of these design tables. So now let us see what all is given in part 1. So in part 1 you can see I request all of you to download and go through it. So regarding the materials, they are given about the materials, what are the components. Regarding the concrete mix, they are given the guidelines, minimum how much cement content should be there and how much uh, design mix, everything has been given. Regarding the motor also they have given, then if you see, they are also given depending upon the site condition, what are to be taken into account. Like, physical characteristics of the soil in which the liquid retaining structure may be partly or wholly enclosed and also physical and geological features of the supporting foundation, extent of water lugging at the site, chemical properties of the soil and groundwater. So all this has been discussed even what are extra earth pressure, water log ground. So go through it regarding stability, settlement and subsidence, injurious soils. And also the protection against the corrosion for the steel reinforcement. They also given the guidelines for control of cracking. They have given also the coefficients and all. They have given the how much thick section is to be used. Then they are also given about the joint, which type of joints are to be provided. So this is they are given the typical cross section of the joints as well. So even the design of joints has been explained here. So this is there in the first part. So all of you are requested to go through this. Even the jointing material like fillers, water bars or joint cover plates, joint sealing compounds has been given. And how the construction is to be done that is also given. Construction of the flow, construction of the wall. Like for example there again. Construction of the floor, floor founded on the ground, the ground shall be covered with an at least a 75 mm thick uh, plain concrete. So it is very clear that minimum at least 75 mm is to be used. Like this all the components has been given. Also they have talked about construction of the walls and what type of formwork should be used. Then test on the structure also after construction what is to be done. So this is given in the uh, IS. Uh, 3370 part 1. So I request all of you to go through. Now let us see with the design example. So let us see what is given in part 2. So this is IS 3370 part 2 which has been reaffirmed in 1999. So let us see this is about the code of practice for the concrete structure for the storage of liquids that is uh, whatever storage components are there. For that. So part, this is part 2 which deals with the reinforcement, reinforced concrete structure that is RC structure. Now in this code book they have discussed uh, about like what all are the components with respect to the reinforcement, reinforced concrete structure. Now let us see. So they have first they have given the scope, they have discussed about the scope. Then the general requirements like design. Like a provision shall be made for the condition of stresses that may occur in our accordance with the principles of mechanics, recognized methods of design and sound engineering practices. They are given the basis for the design, how the design and to which code it is to be confirmed. They are also given how to calculate the shear, total shear stress that is Q upon P into JD where Q is the total shear and P is the breadth, JD is the lever arm. Then they are given the permissible stresses in concrete for resistance to cracking, for strength calculation, they are given with respect to the grade of concrete, they are given the permissible stresses that is direct tension and tension due to bending and a shear. The same thing if you see in the question now, uh, in the question you can see they have given the direct tensile stress in concrete and uh, the stress in direct uh, tension also. So uh, if it is not given, uh, we have to go to IS3370 part 2 and depending upon the grade of concrete. We have to use this. So this is how. So these uh, units are in terms of kg per centimeter square. So we need to convert it into Newton per mm square later. So permissible stress in steel is given for resistance to cracking and for the strength calculation. Then stress is due to trying shrinkage or temperature changes. That has been discussed. So here the permissible stress in steel reinforcement for strength calculation has been given. 
So depending upon uh, the types of stress in the steel reinforcement, we have to use with uh, this. So also they have discussed about the floors, like floor of the uh, tank resting on ground, how it should be, and what are the minimum and maximum specifications. Floor on the tank resting on supports, as well as the other components. Then regarding the walls, so provision of joints, so sliding joint at the base of the wall, consideration affecting the spacing of vertical movement, pressure on the walls. So also wall of tanks rectangular polygon in plan. So how to have those walls of cylindrical tank. Then roofs also provision of movement joints loading. These all things has been discussed and detailing minimum reinforcement. So what should be the minimum reinforcement minimum cover to the reinforcement. So size of the bars distance between the bars laps and bends. So for the liquid storage uh, tank, they have given so many components in for RCC. So we have to go through this because we will be building RCC structure. So we should know what is the code about. So let us see in part uh, three now what will be there. So in part three, you can see this is for pre-stressed concrete structures. So again liquid storage tank, what are the components for the pre-stressed concrete structures if we are using. So they have given the guidelines here also. So you can uh, see these are the guidelines like again it starts with scope. Then also the general requirement design, then the basis of the design. The same how they are given for RCC, the same has been given for the uh, PSE. So you can see the crack of liquid retaining phases should be entirely avoided. Then in estimating the resistance to the cracking, the stresses in any cross section should be calculated as for the homogeneous material making allowance for all the loss in stage section. Ultimate load at failure should not be uh, less than twice the working load. Then permissible stress in concrete has been given depending upon there is a table also given where it need to use direct tensile strength and pending tensile strength depending upon the minimum work strength of the cube. Then permissible stress in steel is also given. Then shrinkage and creep of concrete loss in pre-stress is given. Then again the designing of the floor has been given. Walls have been given. And roofs has been uh, given. Then water tightness, protection against corrosion. And for cylindrical tank the stress is how to calculate it. They have given all the provisions. Uh, yeah. Detailing has been given like what it should be the concrete cover, spacing of pre-stressing steel. Workmanship and testing is also given. So this is uh, how the code book uh, uh, is given here. So uh, this is about the part four. So this is uh, the one which has been asked us for the design. So code of practice for concrete structures for the storage of liquids. Part four design table. This is very important because in this we have got the two component here. You can see one is rectangular tanks and cylindrical tank. For both, they have given the specifications, they have given what are the components to be taken. Okay, say for example, here a rectangular tanks. So they have given movement coefficient for individual wall panels. So movement coefficient for individual panel considered fixed along the vertical edges but having different edge condition at the top and bottom are given in table number one to three. So table number one is given top hinged, bottom hinged. Table number two is for top three, bottom hinged. Table number three is top free and bottom fixed. So this will become where top free and bottom is fixed. This is hinged and free and this both are hinged. So they are given the movement coefficient for rectangular tanks. So are given in table number one and two and three. So let us see, even they are given the curves, so shear per unit length coefficient, how to take. Okay, how to take the coefficient for the wall panel fixed at vertical edges and hinged at bottom edges and free at top. Uh, depending upon the edge condition. Now this is regarding the cylindrical tanks like they have given ring tension and movement in the walls. So walls with fixed base and free top subjected to a triangle load. That means the walls whatever are there are a fixed base and are free at top. Nothing is there on top subjected to triangle load. So this is how it behaves. The behavior is given here the subjected to triangle load. So uh, similarly the walls with hinged bars and free top same way and these are the uh, t uh, the t value and v value that is uh, ring tension is given and hoop tension is given and shear uh, applied at the base so this is how it is discussed movements in a circular slab 
then further depending upon uh, the type of uh, the wall conditions and type of the base uh, they have given uh, the components and how to calculate horizontal movement by using this formula vertical movement by this formula so how do we get it by b by a ratio so b is nothing but width of the wall and a is height of the wall so depending upon that this one and omega is nothing but the density of the liquid and we will get this component we will use this mx and y for calculating the movement Similarly, table number two is given for a bottom hinge and top free and vertical fixed walls. Table number three gives for a top free bottom and vertical edges fixed. So this is how we have to make the use of these tables and also how to calculate the horizontal movement and vertical movement. This is for rectangular sections now for the circular tanks and rectangular signs. So this is how we have to make use of the tables and uh, compute the uh, movement compute the movement so you can uh, see through the tables there are a number of values so we have to make the use of this and we have to design the water tank so this is what is there in the design of the component now if you see our uh, question our question is to design a circular uh, tank with a flexible base for capacity of 5 lakh liter the depth of the water is to be 4 meter freeboard 200 mm use m20 grade concrete and grade 1 steel permissible direct tensile stress in concrete given permissible stress in direct tension given this came now, back from now, a search now let, let, let us see what are is there in so from the given data it is uh, let us know what is, is there so the capacity of the tank 5 lakh liters depth of the water 4 meters freeboard 200 mm density of water 10 kilonewton per meter cube and m20 concrete grade and per is uh, greater of uh, one steel. Let us see the permissible stresses. Now, if in case permissible stresses are not given, we have to take it from the code book. So, which I have already uh, shown. If it is given, we have to take directly. So, here it is given direct tensile stress in concrete sigma CT 1.2 Newton per mm square. Tensile stresses in steel 100 Newton per mm square. And modular ratio M is equal to 1.3. Now, let us see the dimension of the tank. Now, this is uh, a rough dimension of the circular water tank so whatever our water tank is there that is of uh, fixed base you can see here flexible base so circular water tank of flexible base and it is circular and they have given uh, the height 4 meter so you can see here uh, this is the water tank which i am taken into consideration so it has a wall circular wall this is a base lab so 4 meter water should be there and 0.2 meter that is 200 mm freeboard so adding to it total height will be 4.2 meter so we have to decide the thickness so referring to the figure this figure if diameter d is of the tank if d is the diameter of the tank then i can uh, take into account the volume so volume of the tank will be given by pi by 4 into d square into height and this is nothing but the uh, capacity 5 lakh liters so converted it so from this height already we know that height of the water from year to year it is 4 meter height of the water they are given in the question so depth of water is 4 meter so considering that we can find out d so d is 12.6 meter so we finalize the dimension so diameter 12.16 meter and a height is 4.2 meter so this is how uh, the uh, dimensioning is done so let us see the other uh, design part in the next class thank you for today please watch the code books and go through the code books which are put up in the model and uh, read all the four but you will be using the uh, table uh, design tables that is given in part 4 IST 370 only for the design thank you